Tôi là nhà sĩ Đức Trí và xin chào các bạn đã đến với chương trình Storyteller Và đây là câu chuyện của tôi Hello storytellers, uh, my name is Michael Choi. very important especially in Vietnam and most of the Asian people is Asian people they love the lyrics they go from the area of uh, poem and <laughs> I'm a big fan of Thang um, song we mature people yeah we know, we know how to say things yeah you know, uh, so oh, we're yeah. here with my Michael Choi and I'm Duke G you know me know me right hi Duke G Uh, and Michael know him, get know him for like uh, 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. But actually, you know what? You you you, you produce uh, the CD that I I know those guys like Vũ uh, Cát Tường. I, I know her. She just yeah. she stayed with me. Um, Ngọc Thắng Thắng and I work yes. with him a lot. Now we must go with this okay, first, first question. You want to look at it? Oh, okay. So, oh. What is a music producer? But actually, yes, uh, the music producer is the guy who, to me, uh, got a lot of experience mm. in, uh, if you are a, a record producer, you must be have a lot of experience in the studio. Yeah. Do you know how to get the band or the artists sound best or go further what uh, he or she Uh, them mm. have already look at that and bring it into the next level close to what it needs from the market and uh, more than what the market expect mm -hmm. and uh, lead the way the music society of that area going to be mm. that's from the first thought you can mm. add more of that um no that, that, i think the the way we the way i've been brought up to see music producer is he or she is like the glue to the whole project they okay. they they fill in the missing parts they bring in the right people it's you know some people need a lot of help but some artists need mm -hmm. all the help right they want the producer to do everything some artists you know if you're like david bowie or somebody mm -hmm. talented Mm -hmm. You just have to help them when they need you, and um, and I think one of the things that this uh, one of my mentors, a producer in England, he taught me said the most important job for a music producer is to say yes or no, and so that's it. I know your favorite producer is David Foster, right? Uh, uh, yeah, it used to be. It used to it be. Used to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, once, yeah. Once upon a time. Uh, yeah. And he was to me one of the quintessential producers the technology has overtaken the music of course yeah and the one thing i always saw within people like david foster and quincy jones and is that they always brought the human back into it and that's mm -hmm. why they're magic that's why they're so yeah uh, yeah i know um david is one of my favorite um be beside uh quincy of course quincy is a hero of mine uh but not until um 2004, three or four, until uh, Adrif Mandarin, Adrif, mm. like when he mm. produced the first album of the, uh, Nora. Nora Jones, yeah. Yeah, Nora Jones, and he like turned me 
upside down like wow this is the, the other way to think of producing yes um, that brought me into the, the other level of the uh, producing like mm. not just yes the music producer is the uh, the one that you uh, you as an artist as an artist have to ask first mm. but sometimes uh, the music producer needs someone to ask yeah like is that yes or no sometimes I, I ask the uh, the, uh, the door the doorman or the uh, I go downstairs and ask my wife, hey, this mm. is, you think this is a good artist or this is a good track? Yeah. And they say, yeah, I don't know yes. how the audience like it. The next question. What elements does the song need when producing? Wow. What's that? What? What elements does the song? song? Oh, okay. Wow. You can go first. What elements does a song need? I think there's different things need different methods, obviously. The element of the song that I love the most is that the song can sounds great by itself without any production, with just a guitar or a piano. Yeah. So for me, that's what I'm looking for, is a, that element in the song where it doesn't need a beat to make it sound great or make it feel good. So, you know, I think great lyrics, culturally appropriate lyrics where we spoke about before about Viet when we speak a language it has to not only make sense it has to feel mm -hmm. a certain way gotcha. so a phrase if you say a phrase if you say can I swear on this of course yeah, <laughs> so if I say if I say F you right mm -hmm. to some people in other countries they don't know what that means so it mm -hmm. feels nothing to them mm -hmm. but you say that in America you go oh, mm -hmm. you yeah know? so mm -hmm. that feeling the association of feeling with words and lyrics is something that that's what I look for as well. Mm -hmm. Something that that has honesty. I think sometimes when you're missing honesty, when a young girl is talking about heartbreak, I go, oh, do you really know about <laughs> yeah. heartbreak? It's things like that. So I, I look for honesty, the humanity side of it, and um, and a song that stands by itself. That's what mm -hmm. I look for anyway. This question is probably made by the Gen G uh, people that who, <laughs> who thought about a single back in my uh, my my generation and your your generation we talk we, we think about the album not the uh, the uh, the song only so the, the idea of the concept album is went from uh, the 60 so that it stayed there so every time we think about the artists and producing we think of, of the album so this is a, the, the, the color of this album and you go to the next album we think of the, uh, the color of that album mm -hmm. but stay stay put with the uh, uh, the character of the of the artist mm -hmm. so at every album we got something to say uh, something to tell and we collect song so mostly I, th I think about the bigger picture not think of the song but until the the Apple music and Spotify and this this time most people think of the single yes and they think about a song i i don't really um uh, up to it and yet so, but um but luckily that i'm a, a songwriter by myself so of course when i look at the song i look at the melody first so not not think of the the beautiful melody but makes sense melody right what is the the, the the melody is makes sense it's it's linear or if it's not it's, if it's non-linear it must be makes sense like connected the flow must be connected and acceptable uh, and you listen to it and you buy it some young uh, uh, songwriter they try to do that but they just collect the idea from somewhere and they put it together and it's not really so solid solid the idea or the uh, music with the music uh, motive and the uh, this is not really work together so i look at the the music first but of course yeah as a songwriter i understand that the the mu the, the lyrics is very important especially in vietnam and most of the asian people each asian people they, they love the lyrics they go from the area of uh poem like they love the lyrics they don't care about the beats they don't care about the arrangement so that's the culture that we we've been to here um, so lyrics melody if you get a, a good melody song 
and then there are good lyrics on you can do everything with that like something producing but just with, with a piano or like some of the, uh, the latest track from uh, from billy billy eilish yeah it's just like a kick yes. and a very simple uh, bass and you get the idea the, 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 the great track right i love that track what what song is that um No, oh, that's my my kid love that. that yeah. My kid love that, I, and I listen all day. I don't even do. <laughs> Can go to the next yes. next question. Let's talk about uh, uh, Sue Boy. When we first saw her, she was a very like teenage. Uh, first album we uh, we picked the uh, the theme was walk. Yeah. Yes. Like if you walk with Ngoc and uh, and they they have the material and just put it on the table. And now it, the thing of producer is probably just like how to present them and how to uh, package and, uh, what we call like some sun back then, the, the, the FM radio top hit. And it's like everywhere, like people, uh, Vietnamese people listen to Vietnamese music. How many questions do we get? So I'll read this one question. for you. So this is very much your early. So what elements does an album need when producing? What element? Oh well, yeah. Of course, the old day people think of the uh, the concept. If you got something to say, not just in uh, lyrics, but the music, is that romantic or is that energy? You give the audience something to feel and uh, live with that. So I still remember um, those album the back old day when I produced for for Hong Kong Ha, sort of her first album ever. No, no, no. Actually, my her first album that I produced, she have she had one with the other producer. We tried to have a photo shoot that really re, uh, re reflect what the music inside. There was a picture of her standing like backlight, very energy and very um, power woman. And then you go to the music and you can feel the energy, like very strong with the like the, the 80s uh, funk uh, and pops and something like that. So I'm, I look at the, uh, the the concept, of course, and the the image of the. Uh, The color and the image of the uh, the artists, because um, I've been work with some of the, of the local artists here. What what we uh, I, I I've done before, uh, when we signed with the artists, we signed two or four albums back then. So we look at how do we do the first, the second, and the third, mm. and the fourth album. We not just look at one albums, but we go far. Yeah, and we can see the uh, the. Uh, Let's talk about uh, uh, Sue Boy. When we first saw her, she was a very like teenage, uh, and the first album we uh, we picked the uh, the theme was walk, walk. And speaking of walk, and we say like this is the new girl step into uh, rap, hip hop rap uh, uh, scenario here in in logo. She walk because first step. Yeah. And then we try to do run after, mm. and we, we and we would do fly. So we go from walk to run to fly and what whatever it is. It's probably uh, different to the uh, the producer who used to work with the band because they have to work with the material already there. Yes. Like if you work with Ngoc and uh, and they they have the material and just put it on the table, yeah. and now. It, The thing of the producer is probably just like how to present them and how to uh, package yeah. package them. I used to say, uh, you used to say that the uh, producer is the packaging guy. Like yeah. they they package to look good and stuff. Yeah. What do you think? I think the time around 2000 when I started really hitting the studio. Um, It was a time when on albums it, it tended to be like you had singles, you had like different producers and different songwriters all in an album. Because I had a chance to work with Annie Lennox when I first started in this industry. Now she is a world-class 
songwriter, performer. You know the way she, her and Dave Short put Eurythmics together, and the, and then her solo album, which which was the first time I worked with her. It's two thousand two thousand one, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah. Two, uh, the album was in two thousand two. Yeah. And so it was a it was a chance to see someone who literally, if you if you ever see a song write, she never puts blocks together. She just sits and writes. It's like a story. It's yeah. like a script, and it's and it's amazing. And she doesn't care about boundaries, about limitation, about whatever. And she, you know, and I've seen her do demos, sitting down, you know, with her glasses, reading the lyrics, and just SM58 in a noisy room, and just killing the vocals you know but her thing is purely about that story so i i love albums in that way but it, it, it often comes from the artist first right the set of songs the imagery what they want to portray and then i love putting the stuff around it you know the interludes and uh, the production and maybe we can go to this kind of dynamic so i love that set um the chances of doing that nowadays is very difficult <laughs> i know yeah, yeah especially yeah, that, with labels but, yeah the things now has changed a lot and the game changed yeah. and uh, anything everything changed um i mean uh in the last uh five years i don't i don't really work as a full-time producer a lot mm. i use uh, most of my time to produce uh the vintage album like mm. i kind of i kind of go retro yeah uh do the acoustic uh, album mm. produced in an LP only, mm. only mm. LP. Lately, from 2016 uh, uh, until now, like five years now, most of my uh, album that I produce, I got the artists go to the studio, and the band is there, yeah. and they have to be ready, right? Because you you sing with the live band mm. and tracking vocal. Same time with the band, mm. you cannot punch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I give you like five to ten take. Mm. So in, in those that you have, be you must be like perfect. Yes. Yeah. So when you hear um, more, most of like the the latest I uh, see uh, album that I produce, you can see. The, the scene where the, the band mm. is there, the, you, you can imagine that where it is, it's, because the, the sound of the room is very yeah. obvious and you can uh, tell like here, yeah, the piano is on the left side, is there, and we're right, yeah. right, right, right. I'll play you some, some of them later. Okay, for yeah. sure, 100 <laughs> Four. Yeah. This is four. Vietnamese music 20 years ago and now. 20, okay, yeah, well, that's for you. <laughs> okay, and I ask you <laughs> Vietnamese music 20 years ago. Actually, I, let me ask you in terms of, and this is because I love history in terms of um, anything to do with music. So when I read about the history of Vietnam, you know, literally after the, the American War and then. And then I, I can I can imagine because you know we had the Korean War, mm -hmm. the rebuild it takes right for the country to get back on its feet first. You, you don't suddenly open the record company in the right after the war finishes, so it's that step. How do you what do you remember about in terms of the steps of? I know you're very young, but to understand how the industry came about and how CDs started coming out who oh, opened yeah. the studio you know how did it get to that point of okay now we can maybe start an industry yeah it's probably a lot of kids today they don't really uh, know what happened in the 70s mm -hmm. or the 60s of course they imagine something oh i was i was born uh, 1973 mm -hmm. so they did uh, the work uh, and when I was just like two, three years old, of course I don't know anything about before that seventy-five. But um, I can feel how we catching up. Uh, we got like about ten years, seventy-five into eighty-five, mm. with nothing. The day of the MTV uh, came out, we mm. don't know that. That's we right. Know that. Um, how MTV killed the radio star? We don't know that. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, the die straight, and most of the uh, the um, 
the new new wave things we mm. we miss them not until uh, the 85 10 years after the war yeah. we're slowly catching up and they still remember 2000 uh, no, uh, 1991, two something. Mm -hmm. We first have Pro Tools in the floppy disk. Mm -hmm. in the studio. Mm -hmm. I start uh, uh, work in the studio very, very early mm -hmm. because I, I was in the, in the uh, we, we call a kitsch culture house. So I, when I was like 20, um, 12 or 13, I start to play in the band mm -hmm. and, and play in the studio. Mm -hmm. So I love that uh, job and I, I like do part-time job. When it was right. like 14, 15, so mm -hmm. I start. So you very soon, very, very early. So that's how I understand how they they right, growing up. Right. So if you uh, if you know that we have uh, the north and the south, so this most of the studio in the south uh, still they they work with with American. I mean here. Yeah, the war is happening, but but the city still do the business, mm -hmm. and a lot of record uh, produ been produced uh, produced in the uh, sixty and the seventy. A lot, a yeah. lot of them, a lot of music. So a lot of studio still have a lot mm. of nice gear, the Poltec and everything. They still mm. there, right? And um, right. more like five hundred um, uh, Les Paul's guitar wow. was here. Wow. <laughs> From the uh, from um, American soldier, so they're there. Got a lot of good gear, good stuff, good studio, but the um, the music is it just kind of not really mm. it's, uh, politic. Yeah. Everything. Not until the nineteen ninety. Yeah. When we ca have something called reform, mm. we start to open the gate mm. and work for. Um, foreign uh, music yeah so they start to i start to work in the studio from 88 okay. back then i i still remember when the juno Alpha one yeah, rolling yeah, yeah, yeah so they first came into the studio i touched them and then i played them then the music st uh, catching up in five years 90 into 95 and this boom like uh, uh, what we call Lang Song Sun back then, mm. the, the, the FM radio top hit, mm. and it's like everywhere. Like p uh, Vietnamese people listen to Vietnamese music; they don't care about the foreign. Right. Right? They used to, to listen to Canto pop before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They love Hong Kong, and uh, because this came from uh, from Hong Kong, um, uh, a drama. Mm. But from 1995, anything, everything, Vietnamese music. And was it CDs as well? CD. Well, in yeah. city so that was my time mm. when i first produced uh, like million album yes, right, right. so i produced a million for a debut album mm. what year was that 95 uh can I, excuse me i still have that here uh, <sighs> produced in uh, 96 and released 97. okay Oh. Her first album. So I heard this rumor that one of the maybe it was the first import CD was the Backstreet Boys that came to Vietnam. Not really. It wasn't that right. Not that really. Was, not yeah. really. Yeah. Exactly. That was uh, ninety one. Okay. So ninety one. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, Exactly, but at the first city I, I, I ever bought was jazz music. It's not really pop music. Right. Um, this was Bob James. Ah, oh, okay. Four plays in Bob James. Yeah. 2004, I came back mm. and I uh, I opened a studio. You're right. We we invest a lot. We got a, we got the, uh, the the investment from um, from the, uh, from the funds. Yeah. Big studio. Not not big. I mean the the professional gear more and more acoustic drums so, so you went to berkeley what year was it 2000, 2000 into 2004 okay what, what was the opportunity you saw in going to america to study to come back to vietnam two things one that i thought that i have uh, i've been missing something from the music education because i've, yeah. I've been uh, trained with the classical school right so i did 
orchestrate and everything with classical is fine mm. but I have no idea what the uh, pop culture and jazz culture mm. is going and I love to write a uh, big band mm. right right so that's probably to uh, to Berkeley right. I love to write big band I still okay. love to write big band yes so uh, Berkeley seems like the only place that I can uh, can study uh, producing in the state back then right right. I, I never thought of England back then I know that England have a lot of producing school second I I got a feeling feeling like what's, what what was happening in in, in, in in Vietnam back then mm. it's like going into the wrong track oh, okay it's too commercial right like I live in the studio almost seven days a week Mm. and never see the sun <laughs> and I keep doing for nothing <laughs> like I don't really appreciate the, the music that we produce mm. actually back then I worked mostly as an arranger not really a producer right, right. so arrange the music and a, a keyboard player so work and work and studio and, and tracking vocal mm. back then they still uh, tape tracking like yeah. ADAT so I, I tracked uh, the vocal like all day, like, yeah, bouncing, like, bouncing. <laughs> like, like uh, punch and punch. Yeah. yeah. I got to get away of that, like, forget about this. Yeah. This is enough. This is not a way that I'm, I want to be. Mm. So I went back to school, take a year, uh, uh, some time to take off and forget about what I'm doing. <laughs> Do, uh, so I had four years and like, Turn left to make different. Mm. So we uh, we got uh, Alan Walker yeah. at that time, yeah. and uh, we speak to uh, to his manager and him uh, himself, <laughs> and let me take care of the orchestra. Yeah, yeah. And if you add one more bar, it's okay. I will tell him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! No, wait, please. And you know why? You know what? You know what? No, please. Uh, because I don't know any name. <laughs> is this fine? Yes. How to bring Vietnamese music abroad? Song, language, sound, media? Yeah, that's a tough one. I think, you know, from my perspective, in terms of this is what I'm trying to do right now. You know, we live in 2021. We live in a time where the world is connected. Um, and the world is flat. Yeah, the world is... <laughs> those are different people, but uh, <laughs> it's so connected. But there's still this... There are still gatekeepers that don't allow... Yeah, it seems like the, the story here that we... Uh, you and me doing uh, in the different uh, way. Uh, what you're doing here is to bring the local artists go internationally. So what I've been doing is bring the system from the West right. to Vietnam yes. and uh, make it like connected, uh, like to speak the same uh, in the same page. Mm -hmm. and so like we we are from the other some right. different uh, angle. Uh, uh, one two years ago when there's a spotify uh a conference here so i was a uh, the speaker so we uh, we got uh, alan walker yeah. at that time yeah. and uh, we speak to uh, to his manager and him uh, himself alan walker is a very special case how the young artists in you know, scandinavia place yeah. very popular in He's very, he's big, right? Yeah, very big. Very big. And he decided to open the market here in Vietnam because mm -hmm. the, the friend is, the fan here is big. What bring him to Vietnam? Mm -hmm. And what bring him to uh, the, uh, internationally? Not because of the song, yeah. but because of the music. Right. So if we have here song, language, sound, and media, I would pick music. Mm. Not song. It's not in here. So the music speaks by itself right. first. But of course, today we might think that now is not, uh, not really the media is very special, very important. Uh, the PR things very but no, the music is still connect people. I'm doing now teaching 
mm. in my school not not to give them the dream to be a star but give them the basic and the fundamental things that they have to learn first yeah yeah for sure and and with the uh, the 360 degree uh, trend they have to do anything everything yeah they produce them themselves they, ha- they know how to track the vocal mm. they have to do everything mm. playing some place so this is a nice track that i love to listen to 80 db So this is more like character sounds, mm. uh, not clean sound anymore. And two uh, microphones. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel the two yeah. uh, on the. On the Very side. saturated. Yeah. This is space. Oh. If you want to play something, yeah, you're welcome to. And uh, oh, this is uh, uh, Nordstorm. Huh? Is it is a Nordstorm album? Uh, in what me a, album. Oh, in me. Yeah. In me. And this was something that. Initially, this song was a ballad, so I made it into a funk song, and she she was okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so really famous bass player. Yeah. Do I know him? Uh, he used to play with uh, uh, Macy Gray, mm-hmm. um, like a lot of famous. Yeah. Yeah. So none of it is cut. It's all live, live uh-huh. drums, live piano, live. That was a. I used to her to have her in my um, my soul R and B comping keyboard oh, okay. class. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, she studied yeah, yeah. me about a few months and uh, yeah. and she uh, she take she took me as a um, a mentor like some some time when she needs to ask me something. Uh, hey, what do you think about this? I, uh, <laughs> She, uh, she got um, a scholarship at my school yeah. several years ago. Yeah, yeah very talented. Yes, very, 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 very talented. talented. Uh, very uh, good, great uh, songwriter. Yeah. Uh, I love the way she um, she she write uh, and put together the idea, and uh, and she must read a lot of book. Yeah. And in the lyrics, Tang uh, from Ngoc and um, and Vu Film two of them that you lucky to to work yeah. with they are both great song writer actually i took them to key bar and I, they met for the first time we had dinner mm-hmm. and at first it was a bit awkward <laughs> for some reason uh, but then afterwards they were exactly the same yeah but they're very, very reserved in a different way yeah i i kind of am a big fan of tang's um, song I'm I'm a, a songwriter too, but I, I love the way that he, he put together as a song. I conduct the orchestra for their first show in Hanoi. Oh, okay. If you look at the 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 on YouTube, so so it was oh, me. So right, I conducted right, right, right. the orchestra yeah, yeah. for them. So I, I did the arrangement for the um M Zao Nai. Da, 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 for for the string orchestra. Oh, nice. So, uh, so bring them. So they love uh, the way that working with the, the, uh, the orchestra. And I still remember the first day of the her- rehearsal. They say, "Hey, NG, um, I we play with no sheet of music, and so <laughs> what what happened if we messed up?" And how did the orchestra doing? I said, don't worry, it could be too. Yeah. I have nothing with the score, so I'll conduct them. So you play with what you think, <laughs> and let me take care of the orchestra. Yeah, yeah. And if you add one more bar, it's okay. I will tell them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I love the way that he, they uh, they learn and, and and catch up with things. Mm. And it's great band. They are a great band. Yeah, They're like not that. really a great player, but they know how to put them together as a Solid band. Yes, yes. I love the way they sound. Yeah, great. great that you work with. <laughs> Very lucky.
No, no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Because uh, what happened here in, uh, in Vietnam, you can tell because you, because it stopped from the music. It's from the manager. It's from the the strategy. And if they get luck by doing something, it's, I mean. But I think it's a, okay. So the, this is the interesting thing. So I have a very deep belief that the subconscious of a human being is the strongest part of us, which is that the reason why Adele, everybody loves Adele, is because her music is good, right? So the business in the West is there's always good-looking people, pretty, whatever. The two biggest music people is a used to be a fat girl and an ugly gingerhead kid from England called Ed Sheeran, right? I think that longevity, the music has to connect. Without the music, the manager can only do so much. So my gut feeling is, if we're talking about five years time. If they're gonna last from now, they have to have something in the music that connects. It can't be just about good looks or great videos or anything like that. The music has to be, has to have some connection. So I'll go first with Vietnam then. I think not will be there still. I think Bukatan will still be there. I'm gonna make sure Min is there. <laughs> right? That's my job. Other side, um, on the rap side, with the older I'm not sure who could survive because rap is changing so much. That's three. That's, the other two is a little bit tougher. I think Chile, you know, indie bands, I think Chili's will still be there. I don't know Chili. I don't know Chili. Chili's a... Man, the fifth one. Damn. Man, I'm glad it's not 10. I mean, Jesus Christ. I give you a hint. <laughs> I, give, I give you a hint. Okay. Think about Divas. I think Divas. Diva must stay. Yeah. You don't even know any divas yeah, here. You never yeah. know diva no, I mean, the, 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 to me, there's a lot of the art, well, from what I know, like a lot of artists, they just, it's not that they gave up on it, it's just that they had other priorities. They maybe had families, they did, they, they kind of stopped being in the limelight mm -hmm. quite quickly in Vietnam mm -hmm. compared to America where they stayed like Rolling Stones, you know. They stay till they're 80, till they die on stage, right? Do you know why? Because of, of the, the manager. Right. Keep them work. Yeah. They must work every day. Uh, Full time. Uh, yeah, pop-wise, that's... Th there's no one, obviously, in, in, in Vietnamese pop that I can see lasting. Like, I can guarantee. It's, it, uh, oh. I mean, Vukatang is probably the, the closest one. Because the other thing that I see from the, the everybody I've mentioned is they keep creating content. They don't stop. Did you mention uh, Lock? Yes, okay. uh, the, that was the first one. Lock for sure. They they would go farther. For Gato, yes, but I'm not sure if the uh, if the audience still uh, go with that. But music is great. Yeah, I mean, will will they still be popular? Who knows? But will they keep making music? I think so. I think that's probably. I can't say if it's going to be popular. Who's who knows, right? But the people I mentioned, I believe that they'll, they won't give it up. They'll keep doing that as a career because it's part of their DNA. I feel. I think you miss one, Mian. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, Mian. Mian will be another one. Yeah, Mi, uh, Mian is music. Yeah, for sure. So the. Uh, yeah, I love five. I have five. Yes, I say I say those five. Okay. Uh, at first, I think I, I couldn't answer this question, but I let you answer it first, and I, I picked some from you. <laughs> but actually, I yeah, I agree with you. Uh, band like Ngoc Band, yeah. they, for sure, they they will make something happen. Vu Cát Tường, yes, agree. Vu Cát Tường, Ngoc and Mỹ Anh, for sure. Uh, the other two, I believe, must be one or two divas kind of thing like Than Lam or they still there ever uh, Vietnamese people they love the um, adult contemporary they still love mm. the, the music from the, uh, the people that they are uh, legend mm. no but but let's just put them away because this is the the kid um, place I've reserved two 
seek for the new uh, artist but I would go to one of the artists that's been here for a while England I still see the energy in the in her music one more no I don't I don't really <laughs> Yeah, it's wonderful to talk to him. Obviously, established, um, well-known part of the music industry of Vietnam. I think the thing that I found f fascinating was that after he went to Berkeley, he came back and tried to apply a lot of the the international, I suppose, standards of music business to Vietnam. When you've got it here, I think I would love to see this is from the discussion is the more of the connection from the older generation to the younger generations. I think the older artists have kind of their own ecosystem in itself. And so maybe that's a difficulty for young artists to penetrate the older system. Được gặp và nói chuyện với bạn Michael tôi có cảm giác đúng y như tôi vào khoảng 18 năm trước khi mới trở về Việt Nam. À, mặc dù tôi là một cái người đã làm việc ở Việt Nam từ những ngày đầu tiên tức là đến năm năm nay là ít nhất tôi phải có 30 năm làm việc trong lĩnh vực ghi âm rồi nhưng mà đến khi tôi có chỉ 4 năm ra khỏi Việt Nam và quay trở về lại thì tôi có một cái cảm giác rất là lạ là giống như là tôi từ một nơi khác đến đây tức là cái 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 di chuyển của à, cái chuyển động của âm nhạc Việt Nam nó rất là nhanh cũng giống như ngày hôm nay à, tôi đang ngồi đây và tôi có khoảng 10 năm ở nhà đi dạy và à, nuôi các em nuôi các con của tôi lớn lên tôi ở nhà đi dành thời gian ở nhà nhiều hơn thì chỉ chỉ năm cho đến 10 năm thôi thì thấy cái bức tranh nó quá là khác có những lúc tôi đi ra ngoài đường mà tôi không biết tên của một ca sĩ đang là số 1 hiện nay à, nói như thế để tôi để chúng ta hiểu rằng là à, một cái thị trường thị trường chuyển động nhanh như thế thì nó không dễ cho bất cứ ai muốn tìm hiểu về nó Tôi thấy rằng là nếu chúng ta có được những cái cơ hội làm việc với những người như Michael Choi hoặc là chúng ta có những cái cơ hội và làm việc với nhiều ban nhạc quốc tế đến đây làm việc à, hoặc là có cơ, các cái cơ hội để các cái ca sĩ Việt Nam của chúng ta và các cái nhóm nhạc của chúng ta được làm việc với các cái môi trường làm việc trên thế giới thì chúng ta sẽ hiểu rõ chúng ta đang ở đâu và như vậy thì tôi hoàn toàn tin tưởng vào cái lứa của một cái thế hệ uh, nghệ sĩ mới mà vừa sáng sân khấu vừa có tài năng mà vừa có nhiều điều kiện tiếp cận thông tin tiếp cận với tất cả các cách làm việc của nước ngoài và tôi cho rằng là thế giới ngày hôm nay hoàn toàn có cơ hội để các bạn làm điều đó My children say that your English suck <cười> But ok I kind of big fan of Thang uh, song. My wife, yeah. she's very clean. Oh, okay. She do the vacuum and got it out. <laughs> and it's broken. <laughs> oh no, she's broken the... Yeah. yeah. No, the vacuum did, not her. Okay. Okay, you must say yeah. that. <laughs> We're on camera. Okay. <laughs> the vacuum. <laughs> Crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we mature people. Yeah. We, know, we know how to say things.